Hello Warriors, I welcome you all to Phoenix CDS. These are some tips for the lecturate in the SSB interview. If you are old students, you can skip this as it is repetition in every video. And if you are a new student, you can pause and read these tips which will help you cover the lecturate with ease. The launch of major invasion by Russia on Ukraine that started with air and missile assaults on Ukraine military targets before sending troops and tanks across the country's northern, eastern and southern borders. On many fronts, the Ukrainian military fought back. Let's drive a bit into the history. Russia launched its well-planned armed aggression on Ukraine with the military operations of its armed forces on seizing a part of Ukrainian territory, the Crimean Peninsula. The Kremlin has always been firmly convinced that Russia will never become a world leader without control over Ukraine. Meanwhile, a democratic and prosperous Ukraine is a threat to the current authoritarian rule in Russia. That is why the next step of Russian aggression was to attempt to destabilize the situation in the eastern and southern regions of Ukraine in order to form a quasi state Novorossiya. Ukraine succeeded to disrupt the full implementation of Russia's plan, but the regular troops occupied certain area, areas of Donetsk and Luhansk region of Ukraine. The recent war has had disastrous impact on civilian life, killing thousands of civilians, injuring many thousands more, and destroying property and infrastructure. Russian forces continue bombing and shelling of civilian areas that hit home and healthcare and educational facilities. In areas they captured, Russian or Russian affiliated forces co uh, committed apparent war crimes including torture, execution, sexual violence, enforced disappearances and looting of cultural property. Russian forces countrywide repeated attack on Ukraine's energy and other critical infrastructure, aimed at terrorizing civilians and making their life unsustainable. Russia's invasion of Ukraine one year ago shocked the world. The brazen attack was the beginning of the largest land war in Europe since the World War II. Beyond the terrible human cost, the war effects have reached countless aspects of life and of global politics. It has redrawn geopolitical energy supply lines, strengthened alliances among Western countries and deepened divides with China, put the use of nuclear weapons on the table for the first time in decades and taught us the importance of leadership in moments of crisis. China's position has remained steadfast. Beijing continues to provide Moscow rhetorical support and has reaffirmed that its actions in Ukraine are just, all the while trying to retain a balance that does not alienate Western countries and thus render it liable to direct or indirect sanctions. The war seems unlikely to end anytime soon. Russia says it is willing to negotiate peace, but Mr. Putin has also claimed to have annexed four more regions of Ukraine. Since Russia's constitution forbids making any territorial concessions, Kremlin's formula for peace appears to involve Ukraine accepting Moscow's claim of more than 22% of its territory. That's very unlikely now. With Ukrainian forces on the advance, officials in Ukraine now speak hopefully of liberating all Ukrainian territory, including Crimea, though they acknowledge that this could take another year of war. Western leaders have put pressure on Mr. Zelensky to agree to talks amid fears that Russia will escalate the war even further. In the same speech which he announced the annexation of four regions, Mr. Putin said, Russia was willing to use all weapons systems available to us, a barely coded reference to nuclear weapons to defend what it claims to be its territory. It's difficult to say whether Mr. Putin is bluffing or not. Ukraine supplies a significant portion of world's agricultural commodities. As the war in Ukraine continues, it is causing supply chain disruptions globally and increasing the price of food, fuel and other commodities. The United Nations organization saw unprecedented funding gap in the first year of war, placing great strain on operations in Uganda, Demo uh, Congo, Sudan, Iraq and other countries in dire need of support. The war in Ukraine has taught us a number of lessons including the following. Even the most powerful militaries can be vulnerable. Resilience is key. Ukraine has shown remarkable resilience in the face of Russian aggression. This is due to a number of factors including the strong leadership of President Zelensky, the high morale of the Ukrainian military and the support of Ukrainian people. The world is still divided. The war in Ukraine has shown that the world is still divided along geopolitical lines. The United States and its allies have supported Ukraine, while Russia has been supported by China and other countries. The division is likely to continue. Diplomacy is essential. 
The only way to end the war in Ukraine is through diplomacy. However, diplomacy will be difficult given the deep distrust between Russia and the West. It is important to find ways to keep channels of communication open and to work towards a negotiated settlement. India stands. The conflict in Ukraine places the community, Indian community in Ukraine in great danger. As a result, Operation Ganga took place. Around 22,000 Indian citizens have returned to India safely. India urged respect for the sovereignty and territory inter territorial integrity of states, called for immediate cessation of violence and hostilities, regretted that the path of diplomacy was given up, and urged the concerned states to return to it, and reiterated that dialogue is the only answer to settling differences and disputes, however daunting that may appear at this moment. There is little doubt, therefore, that the Russian invasion of Ukraine has confronted India with difficult strategic choices. It could end up angering Russia at a time when India is still not confident of the United States as a sturdy substitute partner. The war in Ukraine is a tragedy, but it is also an opportunity to learn and grow. We must take the lessons of this war to heart and work to build a more and peaceful, stable world.